So Spring Boot has some default ways of working, right? Again, it's very opinionated and has the behavior of convention over configuration. It lets you configure very less by taking the default convention most of the times, but there is always a need for you to configure it. The 80% use case might not, not always apply. You might have some 20% scenarios that you might have to just tweak Spring Boot a little bit to have it work the way you want. The way to customize Spring Boot applications is by using a property file. There are actually multiple ways to do it. One typical way to do it, and I think the easiest way to do it, is by using a property file called application.properties. This is actually a way to customize your Spring application itself, and it's got nothing to do with Spring Boot. So how do you use application.properties? When you have a Spring application, one of the common ways of specifying this kind of configuration is in a properties file in uh, the resources folder, somewhere in the class path. If you have a dart properties file, you can have a bunch of key value pairs that affects how Spring behaves. With Spring Boot, there are certain special keys that you can use in the same property file in order to configure how Spring Boot works. One example that I can give you is the server port. When you start your Spring application, you access it using localhost colon 8080 by default because 8080 is the default port that has been configured for your Spring Boot application. And it's actually a configuration for the sublet container that your Spring Boot application runs in. It's a Tomcat configuration. What you can do is put a properties file in your project and change the default port to something else that you're comfortable with. I'm gonna show you how to do this. This is just one example of the various things that you can configure in a Spring Boot application. There are a bunch more. But for now, let's look at how to configure the port of your sublet container when you start your Spring Boot application. What you do is go to the resources folder and create a new file. And I'm going to call this application.properties and here I'm going to configure the port. The way to configure anything like this in Spring is to first know what the key is. I happen to know that in order to configure the port I need to change the key server.port and I can put an equals and I can specify a new port. Let's say I do 8081. So this is going to be the new port that the servlet container is going to use. So when I start the Spring application now, Spring Boot is going to look at this and it's going to say, okay, now I need to map the port that the select container runs into 8081 and it's going to do that. Now, how do you know that this is the right key to set? Well, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So let me save this and I'm going to start this Spring application. Now Spring Boot has started and I get an error. It says that the address is already in use. Guess what? The Tomcat connector configured to listen on port 8081 has failed to start because the port might already be in use. So let me go ahead and change this to a different port. I'm going to choose the port 3000. And now let's run. Start the application again. Now the application has started and I can access this application in localhost 3000. And sure enough, when I access the URL, localhost 3000 slash hello, I get hi back. So our application is now running in port 3000 because of the change we did to application.properties. Now the question is, how do you know what to add to application.properties? I added server.port because I knew that this was the key that I had to configure to change it to the new value in order to affect what port this is. Now, how do I know that? There's a really good resource on the Spring Boot website called uh, Common Application Properties. You can find this by using a search engine and searching for Spring Boot Common Application Properties. I'm also gonna share this link in the description of the video, but this gives you all the properties that you can possibly configure in the Spring application.properties file, it also provides you the default values. So here you see something like this, spring cache cotch base expiration has the default value of zero, but if you wanna change the expiration to something else, you can just put this line in your application.properties 
and you can change it right so let me scroll further down you have mail related integrations send grid and here you see our server section so you have server dot address configures the network address you have compression enabled context related configuration a whole lot more and here is our server dot port that we did configure it's set to 8080 by default which is why when you started your spring boot application it was available in 8080 but if you want to change this just copy this line put it in your application dot properties and change the value and spring boot is automatically going to pick it up okay it looks at the property file automatically and configures it based on what you've put over here so again refer to this in order to figure out what are the things that you can possibly configure but the purpose of this video is at least to tell you that this is something that you can do to configure your Spring Boot application and this is something that you typically do when you have a brand new application there's probably one or two things that you want to change well then this is how you do it